Okay, uh, I think we'll get started now. So uh, hello everyone. And thank you for joining us today for the final session of our six part series on the China Ready uh, webinar series. My name is Laura Markle and I'm the director of the Atlantic chapter of the Canada China Business Council. And for today's webinar, uh, we'll be discussing e-commerce and how to sell your products in China without having to jump on a plane. Given the challenges with traveling these days, companies should give serious consideration to driving sales through an e-commerce platform with a focus on the massive Chinese consumer market. And to help you along with this, it is my pleasure today to have Shan Shan Tang, Alibaba Global Business Lead, Alibaba Group Canada, Nicole Lin, Business Development Country Manager, Tmall Global Canada, and Rachel Wu, Alibaba Group Head of Integrated Marketing North America, join us today to give us an overview on a suite of solutions for brands and retailers to engage with Chinese consumers and to provide a better understanding on how to access the right tools and resources to reach the world's most dynamic market and ways to tap into Alibaba's very powerful ecosystem. And before we get started, just a quick housekeeping note. This session is being recorded and while participants will be muted, we will welcome your questions and ask that you send them through to the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We will be sure to leave as much time as we can at the end of this session for your questions. And now I would be, uh, I'm very, very pleased to hand over the presentation now to Shan Shan. Thank you, Shan Shan. Thank you, Laura. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm going to share my screen right now. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join the Alibaba Business Webinar Series. And we've done it um, multiple times, and then it's our first time partner with CCBC. And then I really thank CCBC and Laura and her team. Think about us when they are preparing for the China Ra. And we really truly feel honored when CCBC think of us that way. Um, so um, I'm gonna first introduce myself. So um, I joined Alibaba back in 2016. I work in Alipay and Alibaba Group. Um, um, I now currently based in Vancouver, Canada, and then I'm leading the Alibaba um, integrated marketing and also implanting the ecosystem in Canada. And then today the topic we'll we cover today is the ecosystem. And then the second part, Nicole will cover really detailed China Ready, the Timo Global cross-border solutions. And I know from today's participants, a lot of you are from institutions, and then you have a lot of wholesalers and then a lot of brands. And then for any kind of like a partnership, we're happy to work with you. And for example, if you're institutional or you're like a jurisdiction or governments, we partner with like, for example, CCPC, like also VEC, EDC to do multiple and um, kind of like partnership to help local small, medium business because we truly feel the small medium business is the backbone to support all the um, our economy in Canada. We're truly here to help and empower them. So and before I started uh, my brief introduction, I wanted to introduce you to our Ding Talk. So after this webinar, if you feel anything you want to talk with me or Nicole or Rachel, you can download this Ding Talk. And then, and you can find the link here, in talk and, and like stats and download. And also if, you, if you're not uh, feel comfortable, you can also email me, myself, Rachel, and then Nicole. And then after this webinar, together with all the slides, we'll share with you this link. So you can join our specialized Alibaba Global Business Group for all the updates information. So um, before I started the uh, digital solution I'm gonna to talk to you about the Alibaba group first so Alibaba and um, we started like 20 years ago in Hangzhou in a small apartment by Jack Ma and then back then our mission is to make it easy to do business anywhere and this mission still holds true and 20 years after nowadays and even though we're like a multi-million size company now and then we're really our main focus is really to make it easier for all 
size of business to do business in like Canada. So for our economy, 20 years ago, we started with Alibaba.com. And eventually we evolved multiple marketplaces like Taobao.com, Zhuhuasuan, Tmall.com, Fliggy, AliExpress, and 1688.com. And from that, we built up the logistic platform, Tainiao, which is supporting all the logistic and goods, transforming from one each other. And, and we also have the payment service and marketing platform on Goop. And uh, called Computing, Alibaba Cloud, and we also have the lifestyle, entertainment, and health. Jack Ma brought up the happy and health strategy back in 2017. So we built an entertainment ecosystem around from it. From Yuku, Ali Pictures, UC Browser, Ali Health, AMAP. So, and now I have to touch a little bit about globalization. So globalization is really an integrated part of the Alibaba ecosystem. And so we have global sell, global pay, global fund, global buy, and global delivery. And for our main strategy in Canada, we mainly focus on global pay, global fund, and global buy. So, and our main mandate here is we really help the small and medium businesses and also like and actually businesses of all size to sell to China and reach the Chinese market. And then we also am um, helping all the Chinese consumers in Canada and also globally to have access to the goods in um, Canada and help the local merchants. And also we're supporting all the cross-border tourism now, I know with the COVID-19, there's less, definitely less of it, but in the future, we expect those ones to pick up. So with uh, introduce of the mandate and globalization strategy in Canada, I want to get into the overall digital solutions for Canada. So we have main three um, digital solutions for you. And the first one is our e-commerce, cross-border e-commerce solution. Nicole will get into very detailed steps. I know we have like 20 brands sign up for this UN and then she will get into very detailed brands on the Timo Global platform. And then, so we have three main business model for cross-border e-commerce solution. The Timo Direct Import and Timo Global and also the Timo Overseas Fulfillment. And then, so for the, I have listed all the business, different business model, and then what, what's the business model is like, and also the payments, and also the sales marketing management for your references here. And Nicole will mainly focus on the flagship store by Timo Global. And the second solution I want to talk about is the B2C e-commerce solution, web-based solution provided by Alipay. So it's very easy, and I know a lot, of, a lot of brands, when you first start it, you're like, oh, you don't know anything about cross border in China, you just have interest. But I would recommend you to start with something easy with local Chinese community. So the merchant, you can just host a H5 page within the Alipay app. And then we can curate attractive promotions and offers, display them in our app. And so the, we have a large population of consumers, they can click on the promotions, and then on those high traffic banners, and they can make purchase directly on the app tribe page, which is a link to the merchant's self-hosted website. And it, it's very low transaction fee. There is no chargeback and there's zero forage. And also it's very low risk. It's very easy to use. I have that attached the screenshot below for your reference. And then we also have another one we're doing here, mainly offline, is we're trying to expand all the merchant base offline here in Canada. And then it's same, and it's same. It's like a really low transaction fee, low chargeback, and then there's no foreign exchange risk. And then we have multiple use cases in duty-free, convenience store, shopping malls, and all the chain department stores. And then, and I also, and after I introduce those three and main solutions we have for you in Canada, I also want to introduce the fully integrated marketing program in our Alibaba ecosystem. I know in the West world, everyone, you book travel through Expedia, you have eBay, those C2C platform, you have Amazon, and you go through your marketing promotion through like Twitter, Google, Facebook, and you do your branding through different marketing channels, but it's all separated. And then when you're reaching the China market, just keep in mind, right? You can do everything within the Alibaba group. 
So we have our Flicky, Alipay, Taobao, Tmall, when you're doing your sales, um, it's very equivalent to everything I list in the West on the left side. And then when you do your promotion, and it's kind of funny, right? People don't Google the things. And what people, how people do things when they open the Tmall, Tmall Global, or open the Taobao, a search for the product. And then when you do branding, everything you do branding, because we're really a marketing platform. You do branding through our internal and um, entertainment systems, like including Yuku and Weibo. And then also Tmall, we have uh, a lot of branding mechanics for you to do it. And Nicole will touch that later on. So I did a quick summary page for you. So it's really a digital solution for your business. And the first one, the first category, at least I talked about earlier is the quick win solution. So if you think about the China market and, and then you want to have a more um, minimum um, cost upfront, and then I would recommend you consider web integrated with Alipay app or the in-store Alipay integration. It's very easy. Feel free to reach out to me through my email and then I'll follow up with you for one-to-one -one individual meetings. And then also for the cross-border e-commerce solution, like flagship stores, um, Nicole will get into all the details later. And um, thank you so much. And then if you have any questions and um, put in the Q&A sessions, Rachel and myself will monitor it. And now I'm gonna pass to Nicole. Thank you. Thank you, Shanshan. So let me quickly share my screen here. So hello everyone, my name is Nicole Lin. Um, I'm the Business Development Country Manager for Canada from Timor Global and Kala. So today my presentation will be about um, introduction to Timor Global and also I will provide details to the different business solutions available for you to get on board with us. So as mentioned by Shanshan, Alibaba is more than just an e-commerce company. We are a very self-sustaining digital economy on its own. And Timor Classic, Timor Global and Kala are the three B2C e-commerce platform under this digital economy. And Timo Global and Kala are the two platforms that provides the cross-border e-commerce solution. So if you haven't heard of cross-border or you haven't really gotten to know what cross-border is about, it's simply a very easy path for you to launch into China. So how it works is you can bring your product as it is in its original packaging. It, you don't even need Chinese labeling. And um, you just need to make sure that your product is on the positive list of categories for the cross-border e-commerce. And also you have a Canadian registered legal uh, uh, business license and also a Canadian uh, trademark for your brand. And this is all the basic qualification you will need to get onto the cross-border e-commerce. Um, so in terms of the difference between Timo Classic and Timo Global, uh, essentially we are one family um, and the fundamental difference between us is the import model. So with Timo Classic, they, um, they, they basically deal with the domestic um, brands and markets and um, all the international brands who wish to get onto Timo Classic will need to go through the general, um, uh, general traditional trading, which is uh, uh, the traditional uh, import. Versus Timo Global, we perform 100% uh, cross-border business and 100% of our brands uh, on our platform is from outside of China. And um, also the second difference is that um, in terms of marketplace, um, store entity for Timo Classic, you will need to have your company registered in China or, or find a partner that has a company, um, uh, you know, that has a registered entity in China. Versus Timo Global, you can easily get on board with your Canadian uh, registered company. Um, and lastly, also um, warehouse-wise for Timo Classic, because as mentioned, it's mostly, uh, it's mainly dealing with the domestic markets and domestic brands. Um, so even for international brands, you will need, there's only one way, you will need to ship your product to China um, to perform your store on Timo Classic. Versus Timo uh, Global, um, even though the most popular logistic method bonded warehouse, it still sits in China. So in that sense, you will still need to ship your product into this um, design free trade zone uh, into the bonded warehouse warehouse. Uh, with Timo Global, you, you will have other options such as overseas warehouses, uh, shipping centers um, to utilize um, to perform your Timo Global stores. So as you can see, Timo Global simply provides an easier path for brands who's never been to China to get to, to get into China um, uh, relatively quickly and get to know the market, get to know your customer before you move on to the next step uh, for your business expansion. 
And today I will focus my, on, my, uh, on talking about Timo Global because it's, it is the leading, the number one cross-border B2C e-commerce platform in China, carrying more than 25,000 international brands from more than 92 countries and regions. And we often pride ourselves as the global brand incubator. Um, in fact, more than 80% of our brands made their China debut on Timo Global. And last year, we saw a quadruple growth of number of new brands getting on board with us, um, including a lot of uh, quite a few Canadian brands as well. And also, we saw a 86% growth on the uh, number of partners signing on strategic partnership with us. And currently, there are more than 80 brands generating more than 100 million. Our, our sales uh, in renminbi local currency every year. So all of this says a lot about our business confidence. And in terms of category trend on Timo Global, beauty, food, and health, and mother and baby are constantly the top three categories for us, closely followed by fashion, home and 3C, so home electronics. And on the right-hand side, I've listed out um, some of the sub, uh, trending subcategories. Um, under each of the uh, main categories. Uh, for example, for, for personal care, anti-hair loss, or right now this year, a lot of um, sanitization uh, related products are very popular. And for pet, healthy snacks, vitamin, functional accessories are very, very popular these days. And for um, health, vitamin, um, sports supplements, beauty supplements, uh, or anything that's immune system boosting will be very, very popular too. And for fashion, uh, shoes, bags, um, functional um, you know, accessories, uh, blue light, uh, blocking glasses, and so on are very popular in the States. So, um, so the, here are just some of the examples I've listed out here. And I want to emphasize the fact that uh, we do see new brands creating new consumption trends every year. So if you are brands, uh, your products are now within the, uh, the listed category here, there's no worry. Uh, China is big, en big enough market for you to uh, potentially um, you know, make it there. And next, I want to talk about um, the biggest shopping festival in China, if not in the world, which Alibaba hosts every year on November 11th, uh, the single state, or we usually call it double 11 because it happens on November 11th. And what's so special about the states is that uh, we break single day sales records every year. And last year we generated 38.4 billion US dollars of sales in one single day with the help of over 200,000 merchants. And, and it's not just a day to generate sales. A lot of merchants utilize the state to engage with their customer, recruit new customers, and um, you know, ex and maximize their brand exposures overall in China. And next, I want to show you a short video just to um, share, give you the you know the look and feel of what the festival is about. <laughs> W11 is the event of the year. It's a festival that everybody come here, visit it to find new products, new excitement, and also new content marketing. We love W11 because we believe in the power of leveraging this very unique moment to touch millions and millions of young Chinese consumers. This year is actually we focus more on this as content, like streaming. I'm so excited to be here. We have our top 10 brand ambassadors and 100 KOLs who are you know, putting all in uh, might to engage and entertain the shoppers. This year, we actually expanded the team like uh, 24 hours non-stop live broadcasting during the Double Eleven. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here at Tmall today. The amount of energy, the excitement, the passion, getting to see people running around the campus here, all the lights for the 11-11 kickoff. Um, I was on stage, so I was part of the opening ceremony. We're getting ready to see uh, products and sales start to fly across the board. So really a, an incredible experience. <laughs> Here is the innovation driven double eleven. And what's even more exciting is that for the new products and the new brands we introduced this year, they are getting amazing sales results. And this double eleven is confirming the fact that when we're able to get out there and tell the story, consumers really do embrace the brand and what it stands for. Uh, 
sorry about that. Um, it's a technical problem just now. Are, can you guys hear me uh, okay now? Yes, we hear you fine, Nicole. Okay. Okay, yeah, so as you can see in the video, uh, retail in China right now is much more than just selling products. It's really much uh, entertainment. And if you launch a store with us on Timo Global, you will have various innovative tools to, to engage with your customer, to create localized marketing contents, which are very, very important in China right now. And also I have highlighted here, uh, live streaming right now is the biggest and hottest marketing tools um, to be utilized by uh, merchants to engage with customer and to, uh, you know, build up your brand awareness. And in fact, last year, through live streaming alone, we generated um, 100 billion RMB sales. And this year, we've already, um, you know, uh, done more than that um, with in, in August, uh, back, uh, I mean, back in June. So right now, live streaming definitely is something that you want to check out um, once you're launching to China or is thinking about launching to China. And next, I want to share another video, um, just uh, let, a brand, a Canadian brand, Viva Natural, um, talk about their experience with W11 and, and um, you know, um, and also how um, it can help the brands um, to establish in China. Viva Natural's mission is to make wellness accessible to all. So in everything we do, whether it's in our formulation of our products, how we deal with our customers on the phone, how we lay out our office, our mission and our values is incorporated in everything we do. We work with local farmers, with local growers and processors all around the world to produce higher quality products than what you'll see in the retail stores. And by being direct to consumer, we don't have the retailer markups. China is the most important market for Viva Naturals. Everything from supplements to organic superfoods, all these products are doing well in China because they're good for your health. And that's what Chinese consumers are looking for. W11 is similar to how we've got our Black Friday or even Amazon Prime Day, except the scale and the magnitude just dwarfs anything that happens here in North America. Last year was the first time we participated. Within the first few hours, we sold out of many of our popular products. We had two months worth of sales on that single day. And after Double Eleven, our sales doubled. It really sets you up for that next year because these customers saw a great deal, tried our brand, and then once they managed to experience the product, they started purchasing again and again and again. And not only the same product, but other products within the brand. This Double Eleven, we started our planning process in June. We're working with our growers to source more raw materials, building up supply to ship over to China for all these products to go out on Double Eleven. We're expecting this year for our sales to be at least triple what it was last year. Amazon doesn't have all the marketing opportunities and merchandising opportunities in the entire ecosystem that Alibaba has. We've had a pre-sale going on whereby a customer puts a deposit on a product and then they're charged on Double Eleven. Alibaba is also conducting some live streams showcasing our products. A host or celebrity walks their audience through your products. When you see a product in those videos, you're able to just go to Tmall Global, check out the product, all within the Alibaba ecosystem. A successful Double Eleven allows us to reinvest in the business, to learn from our customers in China what they love, what they're looking for. There's a phrase in Chinese, Jing Shi, that means a good surprise. And that's really what China has been for us. From the reception of the consumers there in China who are loving our brand and purchasing our product for themselves and their families. Yeah, so after seeing all this great potential and opportunities, you must be thinking, so how do I get on board, right? How do I get on board and prepare myself for the next double eleven? So uh, from Timo Global, we do provide these three different business solutions uh, for our merchants to get on board with. Uh, first is the wholesale model uh, called Timo Direct Import, the TDI model. Um, so under this model, our TDI team will make direct purchase from brands or suppliers and uh, manage product and, and uh, marketing uh, sales uh, for 
work for you. Um, however, this model usually, uh, our buyers will usually tend to purchase and pick up products um, that are already popular in China. So if your brand is completely new to China, or you haven't had that much brand awareness in China, uh, it might be difficult for you to start with this model. Um, however, we do have a second and third model for you to uh, get on board with and, and prepare yourself and, and um, start from the second and third model and then um, get on to the TDI model later on. So the second model we provide is called the TMO Global, the TMG model. It's essentially a, a B2C marketplace uh, for, for any merchants with the right qualification to get on board and launch their own flash store. So this model, we usually call it an ultimate way to build long-term success for brands because it is the only model um, that allows you to have full control over how you want to sell your product, how you want to engage with your customer and build your brand story. And also, it's the only model that will allow you to have the ownership to your still uh, store sales and customer data, which will um, help you um, to go a long way in terms of building your uh, long-term success in China. And the last model we have is called the TMO Overseas Fulfillment, the TOF model. So this is the youngest model we have, um, not uh, nearly two years old. And what this model uh, does is it provides a very high flexibility in terms of logistic and, and cost um, to launch with us. So it's essentially a B2C to a B2B2C platform where you will uh, just simply ship your products into our TOF warehouses in North America. Um, now we do have one in LA, uh, in New Jersey, and now um, and we are in the process of adding a location here in BC, Canada. So um, soon uh, it will be much easier for Canadian brands to get onto this model as well. So what so uh, essentially, you just need to ship your product into one of our uh, TOF warehouses under consignment. And once your product's in the warehouse, rest of the um, sales and last mile delivery, our TOF team will take care. Um, however, with this model, uh, because it is so easy to get, get onto this model, we do have enormous uh, amounts of assortment and products. So um, it really it will take uh, merchants' commitment and also uh, in, uh, for merchants to take marketing initiatives in order for you to see stable and healthy sales uh, with this model if your brand is completely new to China. So um, today I want to focus more about Timo Global and Timo Overseas Fulfillment, obviously, because uh, this too will be the perfect model for you to get into China uh, uh, to, to expand your uh, brand from. Uh, so first, I will talk about the Timo Global, uh, the, the model that will allow you to come on board and build your own flagship store. So if you think about launching an online store with us, it might sound complicated or a lot of work. Um, it, it is kind of uh, quite a lot of work, but it's it definitely it's not complicated. So I've listed out here all the stakeholders to uh, um, this flagship store project. So, um, so you can easily see uh, who are involved and can, can also uh, help you to run this store and open this store with. So first is brand owner, you, 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 uh, you as a brand owner. Um, so uh, brand owner is very, very, very important. You will need to be the masterminds behind this project, uh, preparing for the investment for this project um, and work with your team or partner to set all the br uh, brand strategy, store strategy, pricing strategy and distribution strategy and so on. So. Um, the reason why I mentioned this team of partners is because I understand that most of the uh, Canadian brands, they wouldn't have the backgrounds of um, China, Ch Chinese e-commerce or China retail. So you will likely need a partner who does and who can provide you with their expertise and advice um, to jointly uh, launch and run the store with. And um, we also provide service to help you find a team of partner. And what this team of partner does is they will help you, uh, like I said, they will provide their expertise their advice on um, uh, and work with you on the sales strategy and also help you to run the store basically run the store on your behalf so provide the store maintenance run the day-to-day -day sales operation uh, provide customer service logistic and warehousing coordination and conduct all the necessary web, uh, web marketing activities so um, the, you and the team team of partner will be the two most important pieces in this puzzle and from Alibaba, we uh, from Timo Global, uh, we support all the necessary IT and payment infrastructure. We support 
um, store data and analytical tools, and also uh, all kinds of digital traffic tools and pay marketing services for you to run and improve your store efficiency. And we also have Alipay provide online and mobile payment solutions and services, and it will also act as a seller's financial center uh, for you to have uh, transparency to all of your um, store transactions and payments. And lastly, we have Cainiao Logistic, um, providing all the necessary cross-border logistics services. So Cainiao Logistic will work with your uh, team or partner to facilitate all the necessary cross-border uh, logistics. And also Cainiao will provide all the logistic uh, anal analytical tools and data for you and your TP to improve on the um, store, uh, stock preparations. So, we have all the necessary um, tools and um, infrastructure for you to run the store with. You will not have to find yourself needing to find answers or um, you know, not knowing what to do. So no worries about that. And in terms of fee structures um, uh, towards opening a flagship store with us, so I've listed out the five uh, fixed costs here. First is the security deposit. So it's a one-time deposit. Uh, which you can eventually collect back if for any reason you decide to uh, close the store. Um, but it's, it, it is a, a one-time deposit that you will need to put into your uh, Alipay uh, global accounts before your store can go, go live. And um, for brands that with uh, registered Canadian trademark, the security deposit will be just uh, 50K uh, in local currency, or B, which is about 10K uh, in Canadian dollars. And if your trademark is still in registration here in Canada, then the security deposit will, will double, become 100K uh, in B. And the second fee is the annual technical service fee. Um, and this service fee uh, ranges from 30 to 60K in B, uh, depending on which category that you launch in. And third, we have uh, the annual technical service commissions of two to five percent. Again, it depends on which category you launch uh, in, in the, the percentage will also vary. And on top of that, uh, Alipay will take another one percent as a service fee. So these three completes all the uh, costs and charges from Alibaba. That's it. And all the information is uh, public information on our website. And number fourth is Timo partner cost. So. As mentioned, Timo Partner will be uh, be another uh, very crucial piece in this project, and you will need to work with your Timo Partner to um, uh, come up with the commercial terms. And we we don't interfere with this part. You and your Timo Partner will decide how you want to work together uh, under what kind of uh, commercial terms. And lastly, uh, is the logistic cost. So. It will depend on um, the kind of logistic method that you choose to utilize to run your store with. The cost will vary. And next slides, I will talk about a different uh, logistic method available um, for you to operate a cross-border e-commerce business. And um, this completes the five fixed costs. And on top of fixed costs, there's also marketing investment, obviously, because you will need uh, to uh, you know, build up your brand awareness and, and, and also, um, you know, do all kinds of activities to recruit new customers and so on. So marketing investment, very, very important. And uh, depending on different categories, uh, the percentage of marketing investments uh, suggestions will also be different. But on average, we would suggest for a new store in the first year to put in at least 20% of their annual sales into marketing to ensure you will see a very uh, sustainable and also very good growth the second and third year. And in terms of tax, cross-border tax is very simple. It's just one simple tax. There's no tariff, no GST, BST, just one simple cross-border tax. And for most of the categories, it's 9.1%, uh, with exceptions of uh, some categories, for example, like wine, it will be 17.9%, but mostly it's 9.1%. And you as the merchants will have the option to bear the tax cost or have your customer pay for the tax. So it will become a sales strategy, um, you know, to, to uh, with your TP, you guys will work this out to find out, okay, during certain period of time, during certain key campaigns, you want to, you know, uh, bear the, um, you know, cover the cross-border tax as one of the promotion offers to your customer. Usually that's what we see um, as a common practice on the platform. 
And in terms of logistic method, there are uh, four different methods that you can choose from to um, operate a cross-border business. So first is the bonded warehouse method. So what, it, what this means is you will need to pre-ship your products into one of our China uh, bonded warehouses in China. So bonded warehouses are only in China. So they, they sit in the, um, uh, the, those free trade zones designed by the Chinese government um, and only are in China. So what you do is you pre-ship your product into one of the bonded warehouse. And because you will have your product in China, uh, this method will allow you to provide a very fast delivery and the best customer experience. And the second method is called Global Fulfillment Center, the GFC uh, method. So this method is very similar to bonded warehouse. You pretty much, uh, so you should pre-ship your product into the centers in anticipation of customer orders. Um, but the difference here is um, the, the centers will sit outside of China. So right now we do have them in US, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and Malaysia. So you, if you have stocks in any of the regions, um, you, feel, you, will also, uh, uh, you will also be able to utilize the stocks there to sell into China. And the, the number three method is consolidated shipping. So what this means is uh, the merchants will basically, uh, you know, need to have the necessary warehousing and logistic capaci capacity uh, to take the orders from the stores, uh, pick, do the picking, packing, and then ship the package to one of our uh, um, consolidated shipping centers. And from there onwards, our China logistics team will then help you to ship this uh, package to the customer, finish that uh, last mile delivery. Um, and this method will be uh, very so will be uh, suitable for uh, merchants that work under uh, API method, the application programming interface. Um, and also a uh, merchant with um, very high warehouse and logistic uh, capacity. And the last method is direct mailing. So this is very straightforward. So it's basically for you to ship your product directly to the customer utilizing our uh, China logistic or any third party logistic like DHL, FedEx uh, through the cross-border method. So depending on the category uh, you, you, your product is in and also uh, your comfort level, you can choose uh, to utilize any of the method or combination of those methods. And the most recommended method uh, for us would be the bonded warehouse because obviously, um, you know, in China, e-commerce is very, comp uh, it's very it's, competition is very tough. So you, you want to be able to provide the best customer um, experience and provide the fastest uh, delivery. Um, however, um, for example, for fashions or some of the food items, items, the bonded warehouse might not make the most sense. So, um, so again, even though we are most recommended for you to utilize bonded warehouse, um, it will really depend on what kind of brands and products you have and choose the optimal method. So um, in terms of onboarding steps for launching a store, you will, we will basically need to go through uh, these three um, steps to complete the onboarding process, which um, uh, first is assessment and preparation. You will need to talk to a uh, Timo Global um, expert, which is me here in Canada, and uh, let me to get to know your brands, and then uh, for me to help you to find a suitable Timo partner to work with. You, you're welcome to uh, you know, bring your own partner as well, but we do provide this service. And once you have a partner, um, you and your partner will need to come up with, uh, develop a store uh, strategy and sales uh, planning for our evaluation. And upon evaluations, uh, we will then proceed to second step, which is uh, officially sending you the invite to come on board with us. And for, your, um, for you to complete all the registration, submitting the qualification documents, um, you know, activate your seller ID and put in the security deposit. And then we will move into the uh, step three, which is um, the last step before we, your store can go live. And this will involve uh, coordinations with our China logistic. So basically you will need to register your China uh, account and make sure you, um, you know, settle all the logistic routes and um, you know, decide on the services that you want to utilize and also create all the look in, uh, uh, localized content, visual contents to um, finish uh, your store look, uh, look and feel. And once we uh, get through step three, then we will be ready for, you to, for your store to go live, which uh, is step four into operation and optimization. So the whole onboarding process, the first three steps can take up to two to four months, uh, depending on how smooth each of the process go. And also, uh, your team or partner will basically help you to maneuver through 
whole, the whole process. So don't worry, you won't be, you won't have to, you know, get through all of this by yourself. Your team or partner will basically help you to complete all the process and talk to you and, and lead you through the process and get the necessary documents and uh, information and material from you uh, and um, help you to complete the, uh, the onboarding. So this is uh, the sharing for the Timo Global, uh, the flagship store model. And next, I want to move on to Timo Offices Fulfillment, uh, which is, as mentioned, is a younger model with uh, provides higher flexibility for you to get on board and test the market with. So the operation model for TOF is basically, um, you know, first on the left hand side, you will see um, for the merchants, um, we, you just need to work with um, our TOF buyer, which is me here again, uh, here in Canada, to work out the uh, product assortments and the onboarding, uh, get through the onboarding process, which I will talk about uh, in the next slides. And once we, um, you know, get on, to, uh, finish the onboarding, uh, you just need to ship your product to uh, one of the uh, warehouses here in North America. Soon here, uh, there will be a one here in Canada. So you will just need to ship your product into um, a, a local warehouse under consignment. And, and that will be it, uh, you know, for merchants. And from here onwards, uh, it, it will be Timo Global uh, taking care of the product uh, management and sales management. And also, uh, once a customer places an order, we will take care of the uh, logistic and finish that last mile delivery uh, to the customer. So as you can see, um, there's very little work you need to do um, at first um, to, to, uh, to go into this model. However, we do uh, recommend uh, for you to be very much involved in the rest of the uh, uh, steps and, and uh, take initiatives in marketing in order to see stable and healthy sales. And also, I just want to mention, uh, this model also allows merchants to uh, get on board utilizing the API, the uh, application programming interface method. Um, this will be perfect for brands with large amounts of assortments. So, um, so, so fashion brands, uh, you know, tends to have thousands of SKU, you know, then API will be then be a very, very uh, ideal uh, model for you to get into this model. In terms of onboarding process for uh, overseas fulfillment model, first we need to, um, you know, as mentioned, you need to talk, uh, work with a buyer, Timo Global buyer, to get through the product quotation, contract agreement, um, you know, to make sure that we are on the same page. And then um, we will move on to account registration, the onboarding process. Um, so during this process, you will need to submit all the necessary document, uh, qualification documents. Um, and once we have your account set up, we can proceed to product listing. And um, once you have your product listing, uh, you know, uh, completed, we will move on to the order fulfillment. So which that's, um, you know, basically ship your product to one of our uh, local warehouse under consignment. And um, if you are API, um, so if you work through API, then obviously, uh, you know, we will just need to utilize your stock in your warehouse. Uh, you won't need to even ship your product into the warehouse, uh, into our warehouse. And um, after that, we will move on to the, uh, uh, you know, product visual content creation uh, to make sure we have all the right uh, visual material and information ready for the product to go live. And then um, we will go to product sales and operation. So it's a very simple process um, for, for you to get on board with, uh, for you to get on board with. You just need to, you know, get in touch with that to start the first uh, product quotation and contract agreement process. And um, lastly, I just wanted uh, some give, give a very simple summary. So Timo Overseas Fulfillment, it's a, it provides a, a very simple uh, way for you to get on board with to test the market. Um, even though this this model will not be able to bring the kind of results that you know as if you to you were to launch a flagship store on your own, but it's a very uh, it's a model for you to test the market first to get to know um, you know how uh, some of your hero item works in Canada in, in China and um, and how are some of your uh, existing visual uh, material um, you know is is received in China by the Chinese uh, consumer. So, um, and also um, it's very efficient in the way that you just need to ship your product into local warehouse. Um, so, because it's so um, easy, you don't need to ship your product to China. In terms of product strategy, it also provides you with flexibility. You know, you can test, test out different products to see what works and what doesn't, right? And also the cost overall, it's also relatively lower than launching a flagship store on your own. Um, however, we would recommend for brands who already, um, you know, are ready to commit into China and, you know, is 
um, planning on opening a flash store um, to utilize this ma uh, model. If you don't really um, have a plan to launch a store, or you are not sure if China is, you know, something that it's in, within your uh, next three years. Um, even though this mod this model will, you know, help you to get on board very easily, if you are not committed or you know be willing to uh, get involved and be willing to also invest in marketing, um, you probably won't be able to see much sales with this model as well. Because uh, building our brand awareness in China is the same. It, you know, regardless of the model that you choose to utilize, um, it will be very much about your commitment and your investment into um, building your brands. And in terms of cost for this model, it's very simple. The basic cost will be just the consignment margins, which will you will work out with uh, with with us, uh, the buyer, and also a very minimal storage fee. And on top of that, there's also logistics. So, so for your product to ship into one of the local warehouses, and also product. Uh, page content creation, which we do provide paid service if you don't have such uh, capacity to do so. And it's also very minimal. And lastly, again, uh, you will also need to think about putting in uh, promotion and marketing investment for this to work and uh, you know for you to see stable and healthy sales and turnover. Uh, it's, this is optional cost, but it's, we, we highly suggest that you uh, prepare uh, for this investment. And um, in terms of settlements, uh, it's also very flexible. You will have the options to do weekly or bi-weekly or monthly settlements. So um, on the left-hand side, I've also um, just screenshot, uh, uh, you know, the look and feel of our Timo Offices fulfillment store. Um, you know, so, so once you get on board, you, you know, your products will sit in one of, uh, you know, in our store. Um, uh, look that look like this. So this is uh, this wraps up my sharing for the day, and I would like to encourage you to visit our uh, merchant channel. It's merchant.tmall.hk to um, you know to find out more information about us or to get a refreshers of what I shared today. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's it from me. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Nicole, and thank you very much, Shan Shan. Lots of interesting. Uh, very helpful, I think, information in there for Canadian companies. And it's just so exciting that you're here in Canada, really helping to push uh, Canadian companies being able to succeed in the e-commerce space. And uh, um, I, I'm, I'm, I really appreciate that you've offered your, um, your details after this uh, webinar. If anyone has any questions to be able to follow up with you, um, I know there are a lot of different models that you've offered. Um, I love that the Tmall Overseas Fulfillment option is pretty neat and it, it kind of feels like it's a testing ground if you're just not quite sure and it sounds like it's, it's kind of an option that's affordable. Um, before we go into the Q&A, which, which we're starting now, um, please reminder to uh, all our participants, uh, please by all means put down your Q&A in, uh, in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, but We've got a few questions coming in, but I wanted to ask uh, the panelists, Shan Shan, Nicole, and Rachel. Um, I have a couple of questions myself, so I'm going to put you uh, in on the on the pressure um, of, of answering a few of my questions. But I wanted to ask you, Nicole, specifically. You talked about a hero item, and I'm not sure if everyone knows exactly what that is. That's that's kind of neat. Can you explain? Yeah, so it's basically the products that makes up the most sales for your brand. So usually for retail, there's 20-80 rule. So that means 20% of your assortments makes up 80% of your sales. Um, it might not be uh, the same ratio for every brand, but um, it's also it's a similar concept. So it's that 20% of products, that's your hero item. And, and, and within this 20%, there's most certainly um, that top three products uh, that's driving uh, a lot of your sales. And that's what we call hero items. Such a cool name. Um, I wanted to ask you as well, uh, when you talk about, um, you know, Canadian brand awareness, is, is there quite a bit of brand awareness in China? And if there is of, of, of a Canadian look and feel, what would that be? And I'll, uh, any one of you want to answer that? So when we say brand awareness, it's very much about individual brand. So it's, so it's about how much does the uh, does the Chinese customer know about your brand specifically at this moment in China? So when if you for example if we talk about Canada Goose, 
maybe a very high percentage of people will will say, oh, okay, I've heard of brand or I've purchased the brands. Um, so this is a so this is what we call brand awareness. How much do they know about your brand as of now? And in terms of the overall impressions of Canadian brands, it's actually pretty pretty good. Um, you know, for example, for la last year W11, Canada actually was ranked. Uh, ranking number 10 in terms of uh, import country for us. Um, so Chinese customer, they tend to trust Canadian products for their, um, you know, clean ingredients and also natural organic side of it. They really appreciate that um, So from Canada. So I think overall we have a very good impressions, um, you know, for Chinese customer, but uh, it's very much about individual brand and how you push your brand name and how you, uh, you know, get your name across um, to the Chinese customer. Well, that's great. And from what I understand too, during COVID-19, I think it's having that faith in something healthy and, uh, and the brand sort of credibility, I think is doing nothing but to help uh, the Canadian brand um, move up in, in, uh, in terms of legitimacy in China. Um, I'm going to just pivot now into the question box. So uh, I know, I, I think you can all see this, but I'll read it out. Am I correct that animal testing is still required? If not required, is it illegal for it to happen? That's been our biggest hesitancy thus far to expand to mainland China. So any one of the three of you want to answer that? So, so maybe I, I can answer that because um, that is a, that's a great question. Thank you. So the one of the best thing about cross-border e-commerce is that you can bypass animal testing because animal testing is a local policy. And uh, that means you will need to follow that if you do Timo Classic. Right, but if you do Timo Global, you basically selling your products through cross border, and um, you can just enter it with your Canadian entity, and you don't need to follow any of the local currency because you're essentially selling through cross border. So that's the best thing about one of the best thing about cross border. You won't be required to do animal testing to get on to Timo Global. Well, that's reassuring to uh, the person asking the question. That, that's great. Thanks very much, Nicole. And. Uh, Next question, could anyone share a comparison of e-business costs commission between Tmall Global and Amazon for a small business without much brand awareness in China, but some in North America? Um, we, I mean, for us, we tend not to compare ourselves with any of our competitors, especially um, here in North America. It's really non-comparable because we are very two different platforms. But I think uh, the question is essentially it's about um, so how much do I need to invest in to, to launch a store on Timo Global, right? I think that's essentially what the question is about. And um, I've briefly introduced the cost structure of launching a store as well as the Timo Pursuit Fulfillment. Um, but as you can see, uh, if you recall, most of the, sale, uh, the, the cost is, is um, about Timo uh, TP costs, logistic costs, marketing investment. So those will need to very much be cost, you know, based on your strategy. And uh, very it will be very different for, from brand to brand. If you look at costs from us, Alibaba, it's, it's fixed cost. It's, it's either 20 to 50K per year, I mean B. So if just simply divide by five to get a rough Canadian dollar count and two to 5% commission. So it's all like very, um, Sim it's simple, simple cost, but most of the variable cost is the TP, uh, the, the marketing and everything. So I would very highly encourage for you to get in touch with us, uh, to, with me to talk about, um, you know, cause there's no fee uh, required, you know, to consult with us. You can consult with us, let's find, discuss, you know, how we can take your brand to China and how we approach uh, your brand uh, for you to launch into China with us. And, and we, we can then see, okay, so what would be the, uh, you know, estimated cost. And also for us to introduce a suitable partner for you to talk to. And because by only by talking to a partner, you will get all the details to what could be the you know, future strategy and plan and then have the uh, you know, picture to the detailed cost. Yeah, and also I would like to add one more comment on that. Just for the cost wise, actually you really need to think about your China strategy. So like for the overall, what's your like step one, two, three strategy in China? And I think the majority of the cost will be involved related to like the marketing investment and also how to build up your awareness in China. So that'll be pretty much variable, depends on your product and depends on strategy, et cetera. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Nicole. I, 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 yeah, I get the sense that um, reaching out to you, one of you and the team to really kind of flesh out what the needs are to really get in um, on the ground floor and, and be successful. I, I mean, certainly what I, what I understand is, you know, KLLs are extremely 
important these days and that that comes at a cost but it sounds to me like uh putting some extra money into a sales marketing plan uh, will do as you've said nothing but good over over the longer term to make sure that you uh, get some brand pick up in, in the china market before i conclude we're almost at three o'clock um sorry atlantic time uh, I wanted to uh, just ask it, Shen Shen, Nicole, or Rachel, any any kind of last comments you want to give, and uh, and then actually two, I'm going to just actually look and see that we have one more question. Let's let's see if we can do this. Mm -hmm. um, does the Tmall overseas cover all the supervision certification for agri food pre import access and inspection? The third CCBC webinar covered the extensive processes for getting products ready for China. So for food, um, it actually don't need any special uh, registration or certification beside uh, certain categories like Jinsan, um, which you will need to apply for specific um, certifications. And, um, you know, it's just for exceptions like that. But for most of the food, you actually don't need any, um, you know, certification. So, um, so just like I said, you just need to ship your products to, the warehouse, to our warehouse and we will take care of the rest of the process and including a uh, customer clearing once the customer uh, place an order and also last mile delivery. Um, however, um, please do, um, get in touch with me because at initial stage, um, there are some restrictions in terms of logistics. Uh, for example, we might not be able to ship uh, products that require cold chain, you know, mm -hmm. product requires temperature uh, management, things like that. So um, for food, there, is, um, there, there might be restriction in the initial stage, but we will be working on, um, you know, clearing out those um, hurdles and, and, and for, for all of the brands to come on board, but please make sure to get in touch with me to get uh, more details. Right. Rachel, anything to add to that? Yeah, I just want to have some like short summary uh, in terms of Shenzhen's intro about Alibaba Group and the ecosystem as well as Timo Global. So basically, we'll, we will like just introduce like Alibaba as an ecosystem. I think that's the big, big differentiation compared with other uh, e-commerce platforms. So as Nicole mentioned for Timo Global cross-border uh, platform, we even can have the e-commerce marketplace and also the payment Alipay to empower it, as well as the logistics for the cross-border because we have the warehouse in uh, uh, US and also we'll have one more in Canada very soon. So I think we're gonna be able to provide that, that kind of all-in-one uh, uh, all uh, one-stop solutions. So for all the merchants, if they will be interested in get on board on the uh, China market by stepping into the China market through the e-commerce platform, I think Alibaba will be able to provide a more comprehensive solution for them. I think that's the you know, uh, big advantage for a lot of the merchants they can consider. Uh, so number, number two, actually, as uh, Shen mentioned, we have some other uh, digital solutions as well, maybe allow the merchant to testing a little bit about the Chinese consumer market in the local uh, locations. For example, the Alipay, if you integrate with Alipay at the offline store or their website, so that'll be easily to reach the Alipay user who actually behind that is the Chinese consumer. And then you can have some like flavor of like Chinese consumers, like the preference for your market and the, for your products, etc. cetera. So uh, I, I would like strongly in, uh, encourage all the people, just think all the way to, to do the testing for the China market in, in different type of the channels. And uh, Alibaba is really confident to provide different angles or perspective to help you to try to easily to approach the China market. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Sounds like a real one-stop shop, which is which is great. Try to make it as easy as possible for companies to get into China. Um, listen, thank you so much. It was an excellent presentation, Shan Shan, Nicole, and Rachel um, for um, joining us. Thank you so much. Um, it was an excellent presentation, and um, I, I just want to say thanks to everyone as well uh, who joined us and took time out of their day to to join us for the Alibaba presentation. This is also an important uh, day as it actually marks the conclusion of our China Ready webinar series. Um, and I just want to say on behalf of the Canada China Business Council, I would like to thank all the participants who have attended our sessions. Uh, we hope it, that you found it useful and helpful as you consider expanding your business into the China market. And also a reminder that we are here to help support you and your business efforts and would be more than happy to discuss your China plans with you. 
And finally, for those of you who have attended all six webinar sessions, congratulations. Uh, you'll be receiving a CCVC uh, official China Ready Certificate. Uh, I'll be getting in touch with you individually. Um, so uh, thanks again uh, to Shen Shen, Nicole, and Rachel. And thanks for, for joining us so early on the West Coast and uh, from the East Coast uh, signing out. And I'm wishing everyone a great across Canada having a have a great day and a rest of week.